Welcome to Graceful Aging. I'm Gregory Bader, your host. Today we're going to talk about staying in your own home as long as possible. Louis Tenenbaum, an aging in place specialist from Maryland, and Patrick Rodine, an aging in place specialist from, let's see, Vancouver, Washington, right? That's correct. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us it's today. It's a real pleasure but, to be with you. But Louis, why don't you tell us, there's a special certification that homeowners can look for in a home contractor called CAPS. What does right, CAPS. For? It stands for Certified Aging in Place Specialist. And it's a program that was developed as a partnership by the National Association of Home Builders and the AARP. And the idea was to uh, train contractors so that they'd be familiar with the issues both of health and person um, aging as well as the issues of uh, home modification. You know, what types of things around the home need to be adjusted to make it a better match for the demographic that they're talking about older folks in America. And Patrick Rodine, as far as for a, an average carpenter or home remodeler who might want to get into the senior market, what kind of training does a person get before they can put those initials on their business card? This gives you insights into how to initially deal with older people. Uh, I think a lot of builders and remodelers aren't used to that demographic. Um, and then they go into the specifics of what entails uh, the CAPS training as far as actually doing the work. But mainly, I really think it, it's, it's getting a person up to speed on what the needs of the elderly are. What's the psychology for a homeowner? They do want to stay at home. Uh, briefly, why they want to stay at home and what does that mean to them? Well, as we were talking about earlier this morning, from the AARP um, study of 2005, asked if they favor aging in place over institutional living. And the overwhelming majority, 89%, favor aging in place, most of us favor aging in place. We want to stay in our homes as we get older. The problem comes, the issue is getting people convinced that the universal design is actually something that they need. People may have a problem, but oftentimes it's a, a family member who identifies the problem. Um, the older person doesn't see it as a problem. Usually the, the CAPS remodelers come to a home when they're in crisis. Right. And the goal is to get them there before the crisis happens. We're going to focus in our the rest of our conversation with the housing stock that's out there in America. There's a lot of it. And it's older housing stock. It's People older housing stock. In some respects, it's um, not in great condition. But what we're talking about more is how the housing matches the actual needs of the residents. So we were younger when the housing stock was built. So uh, there's a, a phrase, aging in uh, Peter Pan housing, right? It was housing for people who weren't going to grow old. Because 40 years ago, we didn't grow old. Mm -hmm. You know, we ran out of money, and then we died. So now that people are living longer, the question is, is the house a good place for them? Has it been prepared for them? Our houses help us adapt to the environment. You know, dogs sleep outside all winter. People need houses. So we have these houses, and when people only got to be 70, houses with stairs and so forth were fine. Now that people are living to be 90, those houses are no longer a good match. So they need design update. So now I've got a son or a daughter who's watching or a partner who's watching, and they're saying, well, I've been telling my husband, I've been telling my father, he's got to change those steps. Do both of you experience? I understand your concept beautifully, but it's for somebody else, don't All you? All the time. All right. So why? Well, we know why people are doing that. So give me a, a helpful hint here. Convince me that I need to change. Well, first of all, it is the power of observation. If I've come into the house and I've seen some things, and, and they are the condition of the railings, uh, maybe dirty places on the wall or a misplaced piece of furniture with some smudge on it so that I can see where they're placing their hands as they move through the house for, with grips. And I come in and I say, your kids love you. And they invited me here to help you be comfortable with what they know you want, which is to stay in your home. Uh, people have a tendency to equate change with loss. So if you're going to go in and make changes, the first thing the homeowner thinks about is what am I going to lose? Either it's, it's an aesthetic or it's maybe a meaningful object, something's going to change. And as we get older, we have a tendency not to embrace change. Aesthetics is a big issue. Um, people don't want their homes to look like an institution or a hospital. And the nice thing that they're doing now with Universal Design, Universal Design products, they're incorporated either they're beautiful things to look at, they're turning obstacles into beauty, or they're making them invisible where you don't even notice them. But I know this is a hard sell 
unless the person can actually experience it. Shouldn't I just wait until I really start feeling like I need some help? Well, that is a good idea because then you know exactly what you need. But the problem, Gray, is that when you are have fallen, it's too late to get a hold of me. I may be busy. I this takes some scheduling. We have to get the right things in. It's much better to take advantage of it in advance. We're sort of in the business of change, changing human behavior, which is a daunting task, and getting people to make their futures a part of their current philosophy is not easy. One way to couch it is to say, how do you, do you love your home? Do you love your independence? Because it is at risk. And one fall can put you into an institution and you may never return. And if you like your independence, um, then you can take small incremental steps now to secure well, that. You get a professional in there to feel their way through the relationship, someone who's familiar and, and interested. Um, and let, uh, let the professional do their work. Now, are you going in there to do 110% of the work or do you start small and get bigger? My, my in-laws, I was very proud of them. Um, they understand this concept through me, it's just sort of vicariously through me. And my father-in-law went ahead and put in a raised toilet. Mm -hmm. That one small chain caused a chain of reaction, just that one small change. And now they're doing other things, changing out light switches securing loose rugs without any really um, you know, push on our part. It, it goes to the idea of if you can get them to agree, and it may not be that simple, to, that there is a problem, mm -hmm. and that maybe our first step is to solve that one problem. So it's not my agenda, it's their agenda. It's the problem that they've identified, the problem that they can recognize. Mm -hmm.